If you run Google Ads to your e-commerce business, but you are on a budget, then many of the strategies out there don't really apply to your case. So in today's video, I want to share very specifically which steps you can take if you have a small budget and how you can still run some successful, actually profitable campaigns. And for that exact purpose, I will share with you three different account setups that you can use with different pros and cons. And I will very specifically explain when it makes sense to use which of these setups. If you have a slightly higher budget, I will define in a second what I mean with low budgets as well. If you have a slightly higher budget, you might still use some of these tactics, but this video is specifically tailored towards people with smaller budgets. So with that being said, let's dive right into it. And what you can see here is just a random uh, uh, screenshot from one of our tiniest clients that we still work with because normally we work with bigger ones. And um, I wanna just show you that there are basically three setups that I think make the most sense when you are on a small budget. Something that I call the classic setup, the granular setup, and also the all-in setup. So let's start with the classic setup right there. First of all, I define low budget as like under $100 per day and definitely under $50 a day, right? So under 50, you are certainly in the low budget category. All right, so the classic setup basically consists of two things only. First of all, a very, very big shopping campaign that consumes like 80 to 90% of your budget. And then typically a very small and basic brand campaign. You see, this setup is super simple, super straightforward, right? It's certainly the simplest of these three. And uh, in this shopping campaign, what you want to do is you want to either advertise all products, which I normally recommend, right? Because if you were starting, you have a small budget, typically means you aren't running Google ads for that long so far. You may not really know which of your products will be the best performers, right? So that's why you want to advertise all of them. Alternatively, if you have some good data already in terms of you know what works well in your store in general and maybe on your Facebook ads or whatever else, you might want to start with only your best sellers, especially if you have a lot of products. Let's say you have 2000 products, but you know that 20 of them or 30 of them get all the performance, make all the sales. In that case, you may want to start with this specifically, but again, only if you are pretty confident that those will be your conversion drivers. If you don't have that many sales yet in your store as a whole, then you're typically better off just, uh, just advertising all your products at once and then starting to optimize and continue from there. When it comes to the classic setup, you should focus on a few things. First of all, constant negative keywords from day one, right? So the moment that you launch your campaign, let's say $50 a day, you wanna have a look at your negative keywords because the thing is with that basic setup and with that low of a budget, you have to do a lot of manual work. You have to manually check for negative keywords. You have to certainly optimize your product feed in the beginning, right? Because with a very optimized feed, you get more clicks, you get cheaper clicks, and that is super important when you are on a low budget. Then you should optimize and uh, or rather adjust the CPC bits for your products on a ongoing basis so the products that perform very well you can set like lower bits to and vice versa uh, sorry uh, you can assign higher bits to and the products that don't perform you can set lower bits to or you can remove them all together so in the beginning you want to constantly refine what's in your product uh, in your shopping campaign and eventually when you have like 30 to 50 conversions a month ideally a little bit more than that you want to switch to target ROAS with your shopping campaign because that's where normally we see target ROAS perform better than manual CPC. Of course, eventually your small budget will become a bigger budget and then technically you can think about completely different setups at that point. But on a basic level, that's what you want to focus on with that super, super simple basic setup. Why the brand campaign that consumes like 10% of your budget? Because you still want to fuel, first of all, the algorithm with some easy sales and brand sales of course branded search is the easiest thing to do so that's why you want to do it and of course you also just want to defend your position on the search engine results page at least a little bit right now let's move to the second which is like the granular setup and of course granular is still relative because we still talk about a very basic simple setup but here you still have a very large shopping campaign about 60 percent i would say all these numbers of course are very very rough estimates then you have still the basic brand campaign but you now also have a specific search campaign, okay? So the specific search campaign has a very specific purpose as well. And in this specific search campaign, you wanna make sure that you use some exact and phrase match keywords that describe your products in all detail. And you wanna aim for like longer tail searches with less volume. What do I mean with that? Well, when you assign only 30% of a 
low budget that you know a low budget in the first place if you only assign 30 percent of that towards search it makes no sense to go for very broad search queries right i always give the example of like sneakers and 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 because that's one of the easier, uh, easiest thing to imagine like apparel fashion etc with a ton of search volume you wouldn't go for like sneakers if you sell a very specific type of them you would rather go for something like black black vintage sneakers for men or something like that right if you look into the uh, keyword planner you might only see like 5000 10000 15000 searches a month for something like that which is certainly not a whole lot but when you run a 30% search campaign and the budget is low anyway, then you have to start with those long tail keywords because those are the ones that have the highest chance of selling. And only when you exhaust all of them, you can think about the next step and the next and the next step. Now you might ask, well, but I heard broad match is the way to go. And I even said, said it on this channel all uh, you know over and over again that broad match is the way to go. Yes, but only once the account is a little more established. So you need conversion volume. Um, and then conversion data as well. And then normally broad match will perform the best, right? If you have the data, if you have the volume, but in the very beginning, you have to focus on the lowest hanging fruits and they tend to be phrase and exact match keywords. That's how you can get like some traction. Will this setup get you to 50 sales a day? Probably not because eventually you have to add more and more and more keywords and especially you have to add broad match at some point in time unless you are in a very, very large space where even some super specific exact match keywords have like hundreds of thousands of searches per month or something like that. So what do you have to work on in the granular setup? Well, first of all, everything from the classic setup still applies, right? Negative keywords, adjusting product, CPC bits, and so on and so forth. But you all also want to change or pause the underperforming keywords now. So when you have like 20 keywords in your search campaign, you still want to sort of adjust or pause uh, them or increase the bits or decrease the bits here. You may want to regularly test the ad copy and the final URLs. So if you have such a setup, don't use like 20 ad groups with two ads each. Rather, you may only have like one, two or three ad groups in this campaign. And you may want to find the perfect final URL to send people to. It's something that many brands miss out on. But whether you send someone to product A, product B or the collection page or the home page has a huge effect on the conversion rate in the end. So you want to find that perfect page that you send people to. And also you want to adjust the match types at some point if needed. So if one of your keywords gets all the uh, like all the attention, you may want to reduce the bit for that one or you want to lose or, or you make the, um, make the match type a bit more restrictive, for example, from phrase to exact. If one keyword gets all the attention without much performance, you may want to be more specific on that. Now, when should you use the, this setup here instead of the classic setup, right? That's, that's a very valid point. Well, if you have products, first of all, that have sort of um, existing demand where you can translate search queries into paying customers. So, for example, if you have a very, very broad fashion item, you only have like three different purses or, or sneakers or jackets or something. Um, it's usually not a good idea to start with search. But if you have a product that can be described very well, you know, a technical product, a part, a part for a car or a part for some uh, machinery or whatever it might be, or, uh, you know, accessories for a very specific phone model, all of these things, then a search element can be very useful. If you sell something like very visual furniture or very visual accessories or something like that without a huge selection, then you are better off with the first, the basic setup. Okay, now with that being said, let's talk about the third one that is the all-in setup. And that is very straightforward and I don't really recommend it, but let's talk about it. One very large performance max campaign and then you have one cheap brand campaign, okay? Well, <laughs> that's the setup that I see more and more often these days. Uh, brands that start out, brands that don't have much budget, but sometimes even those with like a ten, twenty thousand dollars per month budget, they go all in on one large performance max campaign. and. I'm certainly not a big fan of that for a bunch of reasons. Um, you can do it if you meet certain criteria, which I will talk about in a second, but generally you should really focus on shopping and search first so that you can accumulate data in the beginning so that you have full control. Pmax can really do well for you if you have conversion data, if you have ideally you know, a whole bunch of products, if you have great assets, um, then you can really take Pmax to spending a thousand, two thousand, five thousand dollars a day. We have examples for all of these numbers, but if you're a small brand with a small Google Ads budget, then Pmax certainly isn't your best friend, okay? So 
basically what you want to focus on in this sort of PMAX setup is you should use the best possible mix of assets. Don't bother about that setup if you have very basic assets. If you are a small retailer, a small store, maybe even a dropshipping store or something like that, you typically do not have amazing assets, right? You may use the assets of your supplier. You may, might, may use some basic white background photo sh sh uh, shots or something like that. That will not get you very far with PMAX. So only use this setup if you have a great mix of assets that are ideally diverse. Maybe you even have some videos and stuff like that. Also, you want to use multiple asset groups for multiple product lines. So if you have like three categories, you want to have one asset group per category with dedicated assets for each and every asset group. Essentially, in this PMAX setup, you will put in some work up front, you know, audiences, assets, choosing the right products, um, cho choosing uh, sort of the categories to use the asset groups with. But then once the campaign is live, you don't want to touch it that much anymore because it has a low budget already. If you now make changes all the time, the PMAX will never have a chance to actually perform very well. Okay. And then do not use the feed only performance max campaign. Instead, use standard shopping if you don't have like great assets and all these things. I feel, see this all over this uh, place that brands that don't have amazing assets, they still want to use performance max and they do so with shopping only without using assets. But in that case, case, you're not getting the best out of shopping, which is all the data and multiple bidding strategies. And you also don't get the best out of performance max, which is going out to all those networks, shopping, search, display, demand gen, uh, YouTube, right? Because now you are, you are somewhere in the middle and it's quite the ugly place. So you want to be on one of these two ends. And if you make shop, if you use shopping only or feed only PMAX anyway, then instead just use standard shopping. This will get you much more ahead um, compared to this feed only PMAX. Yes, I know it can work. Yes, I know it might get you slightly more inventory, but in the beginning, it's super important to get all the search term data, to get all the learnings, to be to be able to use manual CPC for a little while until you have some more conversion data. So you should not give up on these things. So those are three um, general sort of setups that you can look at. Now, when should you still use the performance max setup though? Because it seems that there are only disadvantages to this, right? Well, if you have a, let's say for example, you only have a handful of products, they are super visual, you have great assets, and you want to basically use all the channels to sell them, right? Then a performance max setup might be quite useful, especially if the products have a very specific use case. And um, again, you have great images, great assets, then sh put pushing that to all the networks might be a good idea. On the other hand, if you have a large store with like random products all over the place, uh, you're just stocking a whole bunch of products without great assets, certainly go with shopping and search instead. One thing that I didn't mention in these three setups so far is dynamic search, which I'm a big fan of, but it require, typically requires, you know, some more budget and some conversion data because then your dynamic search campaigns will be much, much more optimized. Now, if you want to learn more about how to get started, whether it's on a small budget or on a larger budget, you can find the link to my Ecom PPC Academy in the description where I tell you step by step what to start with, you know, which campaigns to focus on first, checklist, templates, you name it, when to use shopping, search, PMAX, what's the best way to set them up, how to find negative keywords, how to make sense of basically everything that I said now, but in much, much, much more detail, very step by step, then check the link in the description here to the Ecom PPC Academy. Or if you have a slightly higher budget and you want us to completely hand handle your Google ads and take them to the next level, you will also find the link to our site cartlift.co in the, as the second link in the description. If you say, no, nope, I don't want to have to deal with Google ads at all. Please do it for me. I hate it. Then we are happy to really scale your Google ads in terms of both sales and of course profitability. So check both links in the description. With that being said, thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. Leave a like and please subscribe if you want to get, see more Google Ads and performance marketing content for e-commerce. Thank you very much for watching and I look forward to see you in the next video again. Bye-bye.